SPM, Form 4, Physics. Chapter 2, Forces and Motion. In this video, we will summarize, the expected learning outcomes of Chapter 2, Forces and Motion in the form of concept map. In this chapter, we will learn more about, forces and motion. There are 11 main sections in this chapter. 2.1, Linear Motion. 2.2, Motion Graphs. 2.3, Inertia. 2.4, Momentum. 2.5, The Effects of a Force. 2.6, Impulse and Impulsive Force. 2.7, Safety Features in Vehicles. 2.8, Gravity. 2.9, Forces in Equilibrium. 2.10, Work, Energy, Power, and Efficiency. 2.11, Elasticity. In Section 2.1, we will learn about, Linear Motion. At the end of this section, you should be able to define distance and displacement, define speed and velocity, and state that average velocity, calculate speed and velocity, define acceleration and deceleration, and calculate acceleration or deceleration. Solve problems on linear motion with uniform acceleration using linear motion equation. In section 2.2, we will learn about the way to analyze motion graphs. At the end of this section, you should be able to plot and interpret displacement time graph. Deduce from the shape of a displacement time graph when a body is at rest, moving with uniform velocity, and moving with non-uniform velocity. Determine distance, displacement, and velocity from a displacement time graph. Plot and interpret velocity time graph. Deduce from the shape of a velocity time graph when a body is, at rest, moving with uniform velocity, moving with uniform acceleration. Determine distance, displacement, velocity, and acceleration from a velocity time graph. Solve problems on linear motion with uniform acceleration. In section 2.3, we will learn about, inertia. At the end of this section, you should be able to explain what inertia is, relate mass to inertia, give examples of situations involving inertia, suggest ways to reduce the negative effects of inertia. In section 2.4, we will learn about momentum. At the end of this section, you should be able to define the momentum of an object, define momentum as the product of mass and velocity. State the principle of conservation of momentum and describe applications of conservation of momentum. Solve problems involving momentum. In section 2.5, we will learn about the effects of force. At the end of this section, you should be able to describe the effects of balanced forces acting on an object. Describe the effects of unbalanced forces acting on an object. Determine the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. Solve problems using F equal to MA. In section 2.6, we will learn about impulse and impulsive force. At the end of this section, you should be able to explain what an impulsive force is, give examples of situations involving impulsive forces. Define impulse as a change in momentum. Define impulsive force as the rate of change of momentum in a collision or explosion. Explain the effect of increasing or decreasing time of impact on the magnitude of the impulsive force. Describe situations where an impulsive force needs to be reduced and suggest ways to reduce it. Describe situations where an impulsive force is beneficial. Solve problems involving impulsive forces. In section 2.7, we will learn about, safety features in vehicles. At the end of this section, you should be able to, describe the importance of safety features in vehicles. In section 2.8, we will learn about, gravity. At the end of this section, you should be able to, explain acceleration due to gravity, determine the value of acceleration due to gravity. State what a gravitational field is, and define gravitational field strength. Define weight as the product of mass, and acceleration due to gravity that is, W equal to, Mg. Solve problems involving acceleration due to gravity. In section 2.9, we will learn about, forces in equilibrium. At the end of this section, you should be able to, 
describes situations where forces are in equilibrium. State what a resultant force is. Add two forces to determine the resultant force. Resolve a force into the effective component forces. Solve problems involving forces in equilibrium. In section 2.10, we will learn about work, energy, power, and efficiency. At the end of this section, you should be able to define work as the product of an applied force and displacement of an object in the direction of the applied force. State that when work is done, energy is transferred from one object to another. Define kinetic energy. Define gravitational potential energy. State the principle of conservation of energy. Define power. Explain what efficiency of a device is. Solve problems involving work, energy, power, and efficiency. And recognize the importance of maximizing efficiency of devices and conserving resources. At the end of this chapter, section 2.11, we will learn about the elasticity. At the end of this section, you should be able to define elasticity and define Hooke's law. Define elastic potential energy. Determine the factors that affect elasticity. Describe applications of elasticity. Solve problems involving elasticity. Thank you for taking the time to watch this.